But let's get into our predicted lineup. Ange has been talking in his press conference in terms of the team news. Yep. And what have we got to look at? So obviously, Ivan, well, he's on the graphic, but Ivan Perisic is obviously out for the season. Uh, he's going to be unavailable for this game. He mentioned Lo Celso, Brian Hill and Benton Cole being a few weeks away, but hopefully they can be slowly integrated into the team um, over the next few weeks. So hopefully they're not too far away. Yeah, apparently, um, some reports were saying that Lo Celso was set to be in contention with this game, but obviously Postacoglu is now confirming he's out. So a bit of a shame, but is what it is. But apart from that, he said that we've got a, a clean bill of health and um, we're looking, he said everyone's looking good this week. So obviously he's a massive blowout. Perisic, who could have been if we're chasing the game, mm. imagine his delivery in the final few minutes to put pressure on them. But is what it is. He's going to be out for the season. So have to move forward with it. Yeah, it is a massive blow, to be honest, to lose Perisic because he's come on and made a difference um, already a couple of times this season. So with the elite crossing ability that he does have, it's going to be a big blow for us if we need those kind of options in the latter stage of the game but let's get into the predicted lineup in goal is obviously going to be Venom Vicario and I've, I've been so impressed with him this season yeah, hundred percent. And you have you seen some of the clips of him in training as well? He is looking yeah. sharp as ever. He's made some serious saves, so he's looking like he's going to be sharp in this um, in this fixture. And I think it's crucial because we've seen what a diff what um, a difference some goalkeeping mistakes can make uh, in this fixture over the past couple North London derbies when Loris has made two howlers has really switched um, switched the momentum of the game. So hopefully Vicario can avoid uh, having that kind of a uh, uh, level of um, mistake. Then hopefully we can go a long way to. Not getting, not being overawed by um, the occasion that we have been. Yeah, let's just hope like um, Vicario keeps as he kind of has been all season, and uh, it'll be it'll be a nice uh, kind of welcome that we don't have a goalkeeper throwing it into their own net. To be honest, mm. in the North London derby, let's move on to the right back. It is a toss up between Porro and Emerson. There's a good case to play both of them. To be fair, but we are siding with Pedro Porro on this one. Yeah, I think so. I think his ability on the ball just outweighs maybe what he's missing out defensively, and as well, I want to give him reward for what has been a very good, solid defensive start to the season as well for Porro. He seems to be improving week on week and I think if there is a chance to play a ball in behind or, or, a, or a deep uh, through ball, I do think Porro is definitely the one um, who's going to be able to pull it off. Obviously, he's probably going to have Trossard on his side so he's going to have to make sure that he's got him on lock but I'm, I'd much rather have Porro in the, in the team in my opinion than Emerson. In terms of the right centre-back, you already know who it's going to be. It's going to be Kuti Romero who's been unbelievable this season. Only one throughout the whole season so far and I think he's going to be so vital in probably stopping what Gabriel Jesus uh, has to say in this game. Yeah, especially because Jesus is definitely the kind of player who likes to pick the ball up in deep position so it's going to be on Romero to either make sure he's not able to turn when he does pick up the ball or if he or if he is picking up the ball with his back to goal, he's um, nipping in with those challenges, being super aggressive, being proactive and look, Romero, I remember the Emirates did not have a good game last time. I remember Jesus kind of ran rings around him. So he's going to have to put that right in this game. And I'm confident he will be because I think he started the season impeccably. Yeah. And alongside him is obviously going to be Mickey van der Ven. And it's just such a breath of fresh air going to the Emirates with two solid centre-backs for once. Yeah, 100%. And he's going to have a big word to say when we are playing a high line and maybe if Arsenal are trying to catch us over the top with some uh, uh, long balls, I think van der Ven is going to be very, very important when it comes to getting across, um, 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 sweeping up any kind of um, over-the-top through balls and also helping up Udogi as well because Saka, I'm sure there'll be occasions where he is able to get past him and hopefully van der Ven can come and save the day on those occasions. Yeah, so on the left back is obviously going to be Destiny Udogi and that 1v1 battle him and Saka mm. is is going to be vital in this game. Yeah, but it, but as I say, you know, I said in the, in the in the five tactical battles, he's uh, against dribblers. He's won four of his five tackles uh, when mm. when dribblers have taken him on. So I think that goes to show um, what a solid start he's had, not just offensively, which we all know he brings, but defensively as well. I do wonder as well whether he can force Saka back with some of his runs going forward, and what what that um, kind of means for Arsenal, or if um, if Dogi does go forward will Saka kind of half cheat and just exploit the space or will he be forced to track Udogi all the way back when he's trying to get to the byline and support the attack so that's going to be a very interesting tactical battle and I do think obviously this is Udogi's biggest test so far and I'm, I'm looking forward to see how he gets on but I'm confident he can have a good game 100% 
Yeah, it's all of their biggest tests so far, let's be honest. But let's run through that back line with you guys one more time. Is Vicario in goal, Pedro Porro right back, Kuti Romero right centre back, Mickey van der Ven left centre back with Adogi in the left back position. In the number six, for me, the most vital man on the pitch is Yves Basuma. 100%. And his ball carrying ability is going to be so important in this game if we're going to maintain control of that midfield if he can carry the ball as effectively he has been in the first five games of the Premier League I think Arsenal are going to really struggle to stop him um, maintaining control and that's going to be very very difficult for them to kind of what, put a plan in place as to stop him because if he's, if he's consistently breaking the lines with his ball carrying ability apart from committing players to stop him how do you stop that and that's going to be crucial if he doesn't get as much joy then I do uh, worry that Arsenal might take control of midfield but the way he's playing there's no reason to be confident to not be confident that he can't strike his stuff at the Emirates and if he does oh it's going to be a sight to see and and if he does do uh, what we're predicting or what we're ex or what we're hoping for is it is he going to get uh, kind of the credit he deserves from the opposition because Arsenal fans are just coming into this being like, yeah, he's all right. He's yeah, special. I think then for a rude awakening, in my opinion, I reckon they're going to be shocked by how, how good Basuma is. Mm. Um, in terms of the right-sided midfielder in the central positions, we're going to go for Pape Matasar. Cast your mind back, actually to the North London derby at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at the back end of last season. You know, he was thrown into the deep end in that game and he was only one of the only ones to come out of the game um, with his head held high, to be honest. Um, and now he's in like a more settled team, a more attacking team, a more team that plays to each and every player's strength. What are you expecting from him? Yeah, obviously I'm expecting, you know, the endeavour that he's been showing the first five games. But what, I, what could be an interesting dynamic is obviously he's not one of our main midfielders. So, he and, and I think he's been playing this role very effectively so far, kind of going under the radar when it comes to our attacking in the final third, being that extra man that no one's picking up and, and um, come, popping up on the edge of the area, getting some shots, making late runs into the penalty box as well. And I feel like if um, he can very much go under the radar in this game and, and, and Arsenal need to be careful that if Saar kind of, he can he can definitely play. We've seen that already this season. We know off the ball, we know what he's going to give. He's going to make, he's going to give tireless running. He's going to make things difficult, life difficult for Arsenal with his off the ball ability. But on the ball as well, I think he could always be that spare man he can be that one buzzing around the final third unmarked because I think it's going to be very it could be one of those uh, players who kind of goes under the radar for Arsenal so he's definitely one to watch out for he's got a chance of getting on the score sheet this weekend Pape Sarra I reckon I would say so um, and then the third midfielder is obviously going to be James Madison who's been the best player in the league player of the month and he's just so vital to the way we play yeah, I, and as I say, I think b who between him and Odegaard, who gets the most joy when they do pick up possession is going to be vital as to who comes out on top in this game. And he's just been so good. I do want, I do want to see Madison as well in this game coming a bit um, into the deep areas and picking up the ball and relieving some of the pressure when Arsenal are looking to press because I think he's been so effective in those areas. But when it gets to the final third, if they're not on him, uh, if if Declan Rice doesn't have him on lockdown, he can really hurt them. So I th and as well. I'm, I'm, I reckon Madison Son link up is going to be very crucial in this game if he can find some Son runnings behind which I, I, I see him looking for a lot uh, human Son with his runs in behind I think they're already starting to get a relationship so I think Madison's crucial in this game so that's a midfield three of Bissouma Saar and Madison in terms of the right hand side of the attack Dejan Kulisevsky who was really unbelievable the last game yeah and I think is going to be crucial in this game as well because the, with the uh, front line we've predicted I think he's the only one who really offers us a bit of physicality in that front line. So if we are going to go direct, which you might need to, if you're like, say we're, we're struggling to deal with Arsenal's press, which might be, which might happen, will probably will happen at some point during the 90 minutes. Sometimes you just need the out ball to go long and try and get up the pitch and have, give it to a player who can compete physically and make it stick. And I do think Kulisevsky has been our player so far this season that we've looked to. And especially when you think about, he's going to be going up against um, Zinchenko uh, physically in those for those uh, long passes I definitely back Kulisevsky to win that um, physical battle and as I say he's very he's been very good at carrying the ball in the penalty area he's been so creative um, I've been really happy with him this season so far so I'm confident he can give Sinchenko a real tough time in this game so I'll be backing him to start and as the number nine it's obviously going to be captain fantastic Hyung Min Son and like he's had like the Sheffield United game was difficult for him because like he was just crowded out of the game for the most part with uh, Sheffield United's low block. But this is a game where he can really come alive in. 
Yeah, and I think it goes under the radar as well. He has a pretty good record against Arsenal, doesn't mm. he? Because I think it's always overshadowed by Kane's unbelievable yeah. record in the North London derby. But Son, in his own right, scores has scored quite a few goals against Arsenal. And not only that, I, th- I believe he's won quite a few penalties as well, at the, especially at the Emirates. I remember off the top of my head a few times, he's won penalties at the Emirates as well. So um, I'm confident he can really um, cause Arsenal a lot of problems. And obviously his running in behind, that's going to be, I think, our biggest weapon when it comes to exploiting the space from Arsenal's high line. And if they if he gets a chance one on one, a bit like Brendan Johnson did at the Emirates, which he fluffed, I don't think Laurel Sum will fluff it. I think he's a clinical finisher. So I'm backing him to really take him to the sword. Well, I'm just looking at the stat now. Son has the same amount of North London Derby goals as Thierry Henry. How many is that? Five. Five. So he's yeah, pretty decent. He's got quite a good record. Obviously, Kane is top with fourteen. Adebayor is second with ten. Um, and then Robert Perez with eight, and then it's five for the few players on five with Son, Van Persie, Henri and Bale. Can you break Kane's record? 14. <laughs> Nine more goals in North London derbies. No chance. <laughs> you never know. No chance. But Sonny up top. And then to make up the final 11 will be Manor Solomon on the left-hand side. Yeah, I think there is definitely a, a question what who we should go for. Should it be Solomon or Johnson um, in that front line? I do see the... Um, uh, the pros to to picking Johnson just because he's got surreal pace in behind and I think he's he can be a bit more direct than Solomon but I do think there's also a case for Solomon because I think for not only is he in good form but his dribbling ability could cause Arsenal a lot of problems I highlighted before that Ben White hasn't been so good when he's been faced um, dribblers so far this season and Solomon has been excelling so far when he's been one on one with his fullback and trying to beat them and obviously he's been getting assists as well and I think it's just good reward for his good form but um, I think Tat Tactically, Johnson might be the better option, but I do see the worth of Solomon tactically as well, not just because of his form. So I think we're going to side with Solomon uh, because he's been playing well recently. All right, so let's run through that lineup with you guys one more time. So in goal, we've got Venom, Vicario, right back, Pedro Porro, left back, Destiny Odoggi, left centre back, Mickey van der Ven, right centre back, Kuti Romero with Bissouma, Saar and Madison is the midfield three. No Solomon on the left. Dayan Kulisevsky on the right with Hyung Min Son up top. You sticking with the three two? Sticking with the three two. That's that lineup hasn't changed my my prediction. I just think, look, and to be fair, I think when we do have that first eleven out there, I just think that um, it's it's a really good first eleven. I th- I think it can compete with a lot of teams. I think obviously with when we have injuries and stuff, and other players have to come in who can't really perform the roles that we've got in the team, I think maybe the system will start to slow down. But as long as we can keep that eleven fit, I think we can give a lot of teams trouble this season. Who's going to get the goals? I'm going to go Sonny's going to get one. Um, I reckon Madders is going to get one. And I think an own goal. Yeah, I mean, I said 2-1. Uh, so I'm going to say Sonny um, in the first opening minutes, catch them out early. And then I'm going for Madison free kick um, in the latter stages of the game. All right. And scenes to absolutely occur in that away. And I cannot wait. Come on. Come on. Um, But that is our predicted lineup. Let us know your lineup in the comments section below. 